Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a tower defense video game with bubblegum, a book about a bunny in a video game, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing, Sean T. Hershenson. <laughs> well, Sean T. is a teenage author. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you're welcome. And today, we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and this is going to be a bubble pop. And now it's time for the Video Game of the Week. Today's video game is Bubble Gum Tower Defense. This game is made by Rumble Studios. Because it's on Roblox, you are able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free. <laughs> you remember Rumble Studios from their other games like Runaway Rumble or Rumble Quest. What's up with this Rumble stuff? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So I start this game, and this looks just like another tower defense game. So I started to play and noticed that there was a little different. You gain levels during the rounds that unlocks abilities and other stuff. This is very like Balloons TD6 from Steam. Wow, it's like my favorite TD game. So this game has lots of different towers, and you can also get pets. You can upgrade the towers with three different skill trees, and once you get two trees, it locks up the third one. There are two, there are a number of different maps to play on that are harder and harder. Oh, and you can also do auto start. It doesn't even cost Robux. And <laughs> this is a great feature to keep fighting the next group of monsters without having to start each time. I like being able to unlock more levels and get better. So I give Bubblegum Tower Defense 12 out of 10 stars because you really get to adjust those towers for your own playstyle, and it's so much fun. And it reminds me of my favorite TD game on Steam. I have to play this. <laughs> Over 40 years, Playhouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact Playhouse Central Florida at 407 898 2483 or visit them online at Playhouse. And now it's time for the book of the week, Press Start Super Rabbit All-Stars. This book is written by Thomas Flitham. Let me to the back of the book. In fact, Shanti, would you like to do the honors? Of course. It's always game on with Super Rabbit Boy. Super Rabbit Boy is taking part in the All-Star Games Tournament. He has to survive three rounds in games, Mega Mountain Climb, Bubble Bop, and Danger Zone to make it to the final game. Does Super Rabbit Boy have what it takes to win? Who will be crowned the ultimate All-Star Champion? Well, this is an AR book that's worth 0.5 points or half a point. It's made for second grade and third month. Well, this is a great book about a rabbit in video games. And you know I love video games. So if you're a current fan of Press Start, you know that Super Rabbit Boy is controlled by Sonny and the bad guy is King Viking. Now, they are playing games and a bunch of stars break into the game and they start handing out invitations to the players. Well, then they are being told that there would be an all-star tournament only for the best players. Well, this is going to be awesome. But there are three games that they have to win at. In the first game, you have to climb the super big mountain and at the top, and 20 people move forward to the next game. Each round had 10 people, and the top two from each round advanced. Well, this was super cool, and Super Rabbit Boy did. Well... I don't really want to ruin the story for you, so you should probably get the book at your local library or purchase it on Amazon. Now, my favorite part is when King Viking was in real trouble. Well, I give Press Start Super Rabbit All-Stars 8 out of 10 stars because I really liked the ending and wanted to read more of the books from this series. <laughs> KBSmith.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help. 
If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. The website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> And now it's time for our interview of an interesting person. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Shanti Hersenson. Hi. She's a teenage author. <laughs> so first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? It's super fun. <laughs> okay, so you were listed as a teenage author. Now, I'm not supposed to ask a woman this question, but since we already knew that you are a teenager, well, how old are you? I'm 14 years old. Cool. Okay, so how did you get started in becoming an author? Did you just start writing stories? I started writing stories when I was probably in around first grade, except I didn't actually think I could write a book until actually around sixth grade when my friend and I wrote this book that I wanted to get a printed copy of. It's a really not that great book. It's short. It just it was the start to kind of everything that's come next. But what ended up happening was I wanted to get a printed version of the book. So we went and we researched publishing. And without kind of realizing it, I had published it on Amazon. And, of course, that led to a second book in that series, a few-month break, and then a million other books after that. Wow. So how did you know that this was the go-to job for you? I'm not sure exactly. Um, prior to that, I had wanted to be a white hat hacker. I had wanted to re be a marine biologist. Honestly, I wanted to be everything. But I kind of didn't have the same, like, passion for um, all of those topics that I did for writing. And it actually or originally was something I wanted to do on the side when I was older. Like, hey, maybe when I'm, you know, an adult in my 30s, I'll write, like, a novel or something and publish it. And it'll go along with all my other careers. However, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. I think I already have a lot more novels than I ever planned to. Wow. So how do you get your ideas of what to write about? I get my ideas from... Every, anything and everything. I will um, see something randomly on the street and I'll be like, hey, that might make an amazing book. Or I'll have a dream and I'll write it down and think, you know, I could turn this into something longer. And even in some books, just like random. Or I'll look something up on Pinterest and be like, I should write a book on this. And I'll have an entire book based on like one image. Wow. So what do you enjoy writing about the most? I think I enjoy creating like these pretty much brand new world. Some of my books are actually in the dystopian genre, so it's like a version of our world that's like slightly altered. I like, I guess I like creating stories, I like creating characters in the, these basically these whole new lives kind of that I can kind of find things I relate with in these characters and I can give people like kind of places to live like inside books. A lot of people, um, you know, say they like, oh, I live in this book or I love this book. You know, it's like my other home. And I like kind of creating these homes for people that they can just like keep reading over and over again and just, basically living in true that makes sense so do you write for other teens kids or adults i write for a variety of people i think mostly my books are for teens a lot of the problems in my book are like kind of teenage problems things that teens can relate with some of my books actually that i think can be read from a younger audience you know 10 and up 11 and up 12 and up honestly i like to say they're for everyone because i even i have adults and enjoy them and read them i have just pretty much people of all ages cool so, how is being an author a benefit to the world? I think it, it can help people a lot. A lot of people, you know, struggle and they need, like, they need, like, an escape from reality, kind of. And a lot of people do that, like, with books. A lot of people read books and they get to kind of just be in their own world. And I like, I already said previously, like, I like creating those spaces for people. I like giving people stories they can relate with and enjoy. And it just warms my heart when people will message me and be like, hey, I loved your book. So, what was the one thing that you learned about yourself while writing stories? I think I learned, honestly, this is pretty crazy. I learned that I can actually write while trying to write my first book. When I actually, after Odyssey, when I was writing um, Biomlock, my first ever novel, I thought I wasn't very good as a writer. I thought this wasn't going to go anywhere. And I kind of learned also that writing is something that takes time to improve on. And from like the first line of your book to the last line of your book, even in a first draft, the writing is going to drastically change. Unless it's a novella, then the, write, the, like, the change isn't as significant. But from like the beginning of Biomlock to the end, it was insane, like, the progress. I have a printed version of the first ever draft of Biomlock. Of course, it's now three books long. But um, the whole, like, the first chapter is just 
insane in comparison to how it ended. And it's so much better, and it's so much more well-written that it feels like two different people wrote it. Wow. So now you have a lot of books. Are you writing some in a series? I have a couple books that are series, um, particularly Biome Lock, which is an alien invasion dystopian series. It was originally going to be a standalone. However, it grew so long. It was 800 pages and 250,000 words, and it was just so long that I split it into three books, and I wrote a fourth book. So now I think Biome Lock is going to be a six-book series and probably more books. I don't like leaving uh, my books behind. I feel bad when I have to stop, and I feel like I can't let go of some of these characters. And then another series I have, which is actually completed now, is the Nightmare. It's like Chronicles of Zyle Delane. The first book is The Nightmare of Zyle Delane. And this was what? Nope, that's the wrong book. Uh, this one. And it was originally actually going to be a standalone book until I decided that it would be better as a shorter, like the series. It should be a series of shorter books and more cliffhangers. And that made, has made it really interesting, because a lot of people don't like the cliffhangers, a lot of people do. It's kind of mixed. Hmm. So does it take a lot of formal training to become a polished author? I don't think you? so. Uh, my parents don't really help me. I don't think it takes much to be able to publish an author, of, be a published author. Of course, you know, you need editing, you need cover design, you need all that kind of stuff. But really, just to write a book, all it takes is, like, the motivation to do so and kind of the knowledge that your writing is going to improve and your first draft isn't going to be the best thing you've ever written. I do think that first drafts aren't as terrible as people make them out to be. I don't, like, I don't have particularly horrible first drafts. I don't think a lot of people do. I think it's something people think. And, yeah, I think really, literally all it takes is, like, you know, the motivation. Anyone can write a book. Mm -hmm. So what is the best part about being a teenage author? I think it's being able to inspire people. A lot of people are very inspired by my story because they hear, oh my gosh, you're 14, you've written like that many books, what? And it inspires them and it gives them kind of like the knowledge that you don't have to be old to write a book. You can't be too old, but you can't be too young. And a lot of that is actually for other teenagers because a lot of kids and you know teens especially 14 13 year olds will be like well I really want to write a book but I don't think I'm I don't think I'm old enough to I think I'm not a good writer except I can I proved everyone wrong <laughs> so speaking about writing books how many books have you written I've written 14 books I'm currently writing my 15th book and my 16th book wow so is that like one for each year um, not particularly. I think it's going to be closer to maybe six books per year. Actually, probably more. Some of my books have only taken a month to write. I had one um, novel, The Accidental Insurgent, that I wrote over the summer. And the first draft, which is a 350-page book, the first draft took me about 16 days to write. And I had another book, You Won't Know Her Name, which is a novel told in poetry. And it took me only 10 days to write. And I've had some other novels, though, that have taken me about a month to write. Each style book took approximately a month. And I think Biomlock took the longest in around a year, just because that was when I wasn't so comfortable with, like, writing other books. And I was just writing it and then going back and editing it and editing it. But it did only take a few months to complete the first draft. Mm. Okay. So what was the one thing that you, when you started to publish your work, that you did not expect? I did not expect the amount of attention, and it's about it, that, the amount of attention I would get. I thought, you know, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to get a physical copy of my book, and that's going to be that. And um, in a way, I did expect that once I finished Biomlock, I was going to get a traditional publishing contract. I was going to be really famous. My book was going to be made into movies. Except that's not entirely that's not entirely wrong. I've gotten a lot more publicity and attention for my books than I ever expected, um, particularly on apps like TikTok and stuff. I just it kind of blew up, and I just I, I'm still kind of shocked. Wow. So, what is the hardest part about being a teenage author? I think a lot of it can be um, balancing writing with school. It is extremely hard to find time to write during the school days. Though I am in my school's creative writing elective, I do find time to write um, outside of school because I just I write every single day. I can't like not write. It'll like be kind of stressful, and then you know I feel like I'm being behind. I'll, I'll get behind. Except I do think that maybe there are more stuff outside of school that's harder. You know book reviews, all that kind of stuff, but still, it's like, it's all worth it, so. Mm -hmm. So, what is the one thing that you think that would make your job easier? Hmm. I'm not actually sure. I think, um, an instant readership, of course, is something that, like, everyone wants, you know. Oh my gosh, I have a million readers! That's amazing! Like, that normally doesn't happen, 
But I think, um, you know, I'm slowly developing my readership, and that's enough. Though, by the time I had published my first book, if I already would have had a handful of readers, that would have made everything a lot easier, and it would have been would. easier to write more books, yeah. But, yeah, it's not exactly kind of a must. Like, you know, everything develops just like your writing style, and it builds, and it's, like, all gets to a point where it's all worth it. Because mm-hmm. if you have more readers, then you have more opinions. Yeah. It kind of helps you figure out, okay, how many people like this amount of cliffhangers and which do not like cliffhangers. You can basically set that out in a poll or something. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So what advice what would you give to my listeners, listeners if they wanted they to grow up and write a book write or two? I think start writing young, start writing your short stories, poems, whatever you want to write. You don't have to write every single day, though I say it's game changer. It's just the best way to improve your writing. You know, even if you're young, like, you know, write a little short story, write a journal entry. Just keep writing until you're comfortable and you know how to write a book until you can kind of get to that point where it's easier and easier. And honestly, I think that, like, your listeners probably could write a book, you know, maybe a short story, maybe they won't publish it. But it's still something that people don't understand is easier. It's both easier and harder, but it's something that young people can very easily do, I think. Mm, That makes sense. So do you write on your computer or do you use pen and paper? I can't use pen and paper. My handwriting is not that great. So instead, I resort to um, using my computer. Usually, I actually use readsy.com to write my books. However, for my newest one, I've been trying Google Doc, just Google Doc, just because it hides the word count. and It's a little easier to just get my thoughts out without constantly looking at the word count and freaking out over, oh my gosh, I've written too much or I'm not writing enough. <laughs> so how did you get it published? Did you have to talk to a bunch of publishers or did you self-publish? So, as a 14-year-old, and then actually, I've been publishing books since I was 12 and 13, it's a lot easier to self-publish, because, especially for me, I don't know if I really want a publisher telling me I have to change all this stuff when I'm a 13 year, a 14-year-old, and having to kind of be so focused on one book that I can't even focus on my schoolwork. So, for now, I actually self-publish, and it's really cool, because I get to control the covers, I get to pretty much control everything about the book. It's like, I'm the publisher, basically, and I, I do that through Amazon's KDP, Anyone can do it, though I'd recommend only doing it when you're, you've actually had you ha- your book and you're comfortable with your book and it's been edited. Because if not, you know, you might get negative reviews. And if you publish a book before you're, like, fully comfortable with it, it's not going to go well for you. But generally, I think KDP is just an amazing website. It's my favorite self-publishing platform. <laughs> cool. So what is one message that you want to get out to the kids all over the world about writing books? You're never too young to do something, and you're never too old to do it either. You just, you can pretty much, you can write a book at any age, and you should definitely try it if you haven't, and just believe in yourself. Great. So, you should probably put that on your grave, though, because those are some great words. I should. <laughs> so, I, ha- I run a radio show and podcast that talks about God during my Lion's Dog segment. How do you include God's message in your work? I'm not quite sure. I don't try to include that many religious undertones in my books, but I do try to include a lot of strong morals and lessons for my for that people can kind of take from these characters. There are a lot of lessons about actually friendship in particular and about actually I try to put like one strong lesson in every chapter almost in every book to try to kind of give people good morals. Although some of the characters aren't like good characters, so they don't have good morals and you kind of got to look for those. <laughs> So, what is the one book that you are most proud of? Hmm. I have to say Biomlock because I started writing it when I was 12 in the first draft. It's 800 pages long. It's super kind of... It's super intense, a lot of it. There are a lot of lessons packed into it. A lot of really exciting scenes. Um, This is the first draft. I have this in every interview, everything. It's probably my favorite book of mine, even though it's not an actually published book. The first Biomlock book, which is only like a third of this book, is a lot shorter than it. But just this giant 800-page thing is just still amazing to me. <laughs> and I see that you have little bookmarks in there. Uh, is that for like each book? Um, the little bookmarks are more for um, little stickies I wrote about characters, things that I want to take out. A couple of them have error written on them, which is there's some grammatical errors I caught that I needed to change. Those are mostly editing notes. A lot of them aren't very... I don't want to say interesting because they are and they're all really funny. They're not They're not very helpful. They're mostly me being like, oh, I hate this character. This character's awful or this needs to change, except they're all written in very funny ways. A lot of them are just me like getting mad at the characters and their poor choices. Mm-hmm. So what is the craziest thing that has happened while you were doing your passion? Hmm. I think I got a 
say, um, on the topic of biome lock again, first, it growing so long and splitting it into, you know, multiple books, but also, this is about all of my books, is that I've had people make videos of them opening my books and make posts about my books, and I never expected that I would get so far that other people were making videos in, like, actually, mainly TikToks and Instagram posts, being like, oh my gosh, everyone, look at this new book I got, it's from this super cool 14-year-old author, and it, like, makes my day every single time I see one, it's so cool, and I never thought that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, have you gotten a lot of awards for writing? Which is your favorite award? Actually, I haven't gotten any um, official, like, book awards yet. I'm actually, one of my books, um, you won't know her name, is entered in a bunch of them, but I'm still awaiting the results. Uh, but I have gotten a writing award, and it was for Modeling United Nations, which I don't know if they have them, if they have that where you're from, but it's um, kind of a middle school, high school thing, where it's kind of like debate and, like, drama, kind of, but there's a writing portion where you have to write a position paper as a certain president, and it's very fascinating. I wrote this paper... Um, pretending to be Franklin D. Roosevelt, and I won an award for it. Um, and I was up against a lot of um, high schoolers and eighth graders. I was in seventh grade then, and I still have it framed in my room. Wow. So who helped motivate or inspire you the most in following your dreams? Honestly, every author to exist has. Um, every time I would pass by a bookstore as a little kid, and I used to go to the bookstore a ton, and I would see the like the pictures of the authors in the window, and it was like book signing for this author. And I would always really want to go, and I would always just be so impressed that like this person wrote this book, even if it was a children's book. I was in awe that someone could do that. It was just insane to me. And I think every single one of those people, though, I don't actually remember what authors were having book signings. I had, we actually had authors speak at our schools a lot, and like pretty much anyone who's an author inspired me at one point. Mm -hmm. So, if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? Um, so, about 10 years ago, I would have been 4 years old, and that would have been definitely the time when I would have been, you know, wandering the bookstores, looking for books, and that was probably the first time I thought, hey, I want to be an author, so I think I would definitely tell myself, like, congratulations, you're, you've done it, you're an author now, and I think, yeah, that was the message I would give myself. I don't know how helpful it would be, because I kind of discovered this on my own, but mm -hmm. definitely would do that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So what was the biggest mistake you ever made, and how did it change you as a person? Hmm, I'm not quite sure about that. It's like, I have to really think about that. That's a good question. Um, In terms of writing, I think, one of my biggest, um, I don't want to say it was one of my biggest mistakes, but it probably was, was that, in, it actually was especially in fourth grade, but I didn't think I was a good writer whatsoever. We had a lot of times when we were asked to share our writing, and I was never asked to share. I never really shared my writing. And that kind of led to me deciding, like, you know, I don't want to be an author anymore. I'm not going to be able to do this. And that mindset kind of stuck for, like, a year where I thought my writing wasn't good enough. It's not, it's not, it's not long enough. It's not going to go anywhere. I need to stop. And I just actually pretty much stopped writing. I used to really write for fun. I don't think for about a year I really did. Maybe a few months, a year. And then actually in sixth grade, I finally picked it up again. and was like, you know, I'm going to do this. And that's when I wrote my first book. <laughs> Cool. So when you're not working with writing, what do you do for fun? I um, This is very much obvious, but I love to read. So I read a lot of books. I also I have um, three cats, and I love hanging out with them, and I love petting them. I like going on walks. I also, of course, like playing Beyblades. I didn't know that. <laughs> so I heard you did some of the World Beyblade Tournaments. How much fun was that? Those are probably one of the funnest things I do besides writing. I've been doing them for about four years, ever since I was in fourth grade. And the people that go there are some of the nicest people. It's like of all ages, you know, there are some younger yeah. kids, some older kids, some adults. It's so cool because, you know, Beyblades essentially are really fun and they're fun to play by yourself or with your family members. But playing with all these new people and getting to see like what Beyblades they have is something I've really enjoyed doing. And actually it's gotten to the point where I get to host my own tournaments through the World Beyblade Organization and I have them down in San Diego and I also drive up to um, LA, which is where I used to live, just to go to the tournaments. And then of course I do some book related stuff up there, but it's just amazing. Cool. So what was your favorite book to read? Um, my current favorite book is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. It's a bit for older kids, you know, maybe 13, 14 and up. I read it when I was 13 in seventh grade. Um, I've read, I read a ton. I'm currently reading multiple books because I can never stick to one. Although there's this one book now that I'm reading, like, a lot more than all the other ones. But I've read, oh, I've read a lot in elementary school. So, like, pretty much 
any middle grade series you can think of i've ever i've ever i've either read it or started reading it <laughs> hmm. so, okay okay now can you tell me that one story you know remember this is a kid show but that one story hmm. well hmm, that you're not supposed to tell me about come on hmm. Actually, this is very much, it's really funny, um, because my parents just found out about this, but usually, you know, I kind of, you know, I need to get good, I need to get a good night's sleep, because I'm a writer, and I have school, but, um, don't tell my parents this, but on multiple occasions, I've, um, like, woken up at, like, three in the morning, and I've just finished books, and just read for hours, and they don't actually know this, so, uh, mom or dad, if you're listening, hi, (laughs) um, I, um, I kept waking up in the middle of the night to read, and it's kind of silly, but um, I'm not supposed to do it's that. Kind of like, hey, parents, um, I've been waking up at three a.m. just to read. Yeah, that's why I'm so grumpy in the mornings. <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you? Hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, do you have a website or Facebook for my listeners to want to follow you? I do. Um, my website is shantihershenson.com, S-H-A-N-T-I-H-E-R-S-H-E-N-S-O-N. You can find occasional updates about my books. You can find actually all my books, all my interviews, everything there. You can also find me on Instagram at Shanti Hershenson and TikTok at Shanti Who Writes. That's been probably my favorite platform to be on so far. It's kind of fun, and I get to um, connect with other teenagers. Mm, that makes sense, because all, almost all of the teenagers are on TikTok right now. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Shanti, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Of course. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Well, thank you, Shanti, for helping me with Math Corners. Today, we're going to talk about multiplying exponents with the same base. I feel like I just learned this. Or just refreshed on it, something like that. Ah, yeah, I just had a test on very handy uh, for dealing with variables, isn't it? Yeah. Especially with exponents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have been talking a lot about algebra lately, and today, I think I have a good one. When you are going to multiply exponents with the same base, you just add them. So, I know it sounded crazy, but then I looked into why. So, if you have x squared times x cubed, you can just write it all out. So, x squared is x times x. Then, x cubed is x times x times x. So, if you times them together, you just get x times x times x times x times x. So, it ends up being x to the fifth power. Uh, I just want to do this out no, a few times, and no matter how you do it, all you really have to do is just add the exponents. And then you do have the simplified answer. So if you have x to the fifth power, it would mean in times x to the seventh power, we just add the five and the seven together and get x to the twelfth power. So much easier. How many times have I said x in here? <laughs> what? It's so much. So Shanti, do you know all about multiplying exponents with the same base? I do. Well, my teacher says that I would use math every day. Does your teacher tell you that? Do you use math when writing your books? I sometimes do. There are little things I need to, like, figure out how something would work, and I'll have to resort to math to do it. Often, though, my books aren't more math. They could be more mathematically correct than they are, but very often I do try to incorporate math in, like, other things like that. Well, thank you so much, Shanti, for your help with Math Corners. Of course. Midstate Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Midstate Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. So as you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're going to talk about obedience. For me, I think obedience is being fully committed to doing what is pleasing to God. The qualities of obedience are compliance with a good attitude and respect for the laws. You know when someone is obedient when they follow instructions willingly and truly. 
So this week, I saw obedience with my dad. Now let's get real. No one likes obedience and doing what they're told to do. My dad was on a computer job and the client was a little older. And she wanted him to do it the way, just the way she wanted it. And it was a lot slower and confusing the way she wanted it. But she was a client. I can tell my dad wasn't happy. But he understood that even though it was way slower and more confusing, it was in a way that the client could remember. So he kept a smile on his face and did each task exactly the way she wanted it. It took forever. But at least she was happy and understood how to do what she wanted to do. So Shanti, did you see or use obedience at all this week? I'm sure I have, especially, you know, in school you see, you know, kids have to follow directions. I think, um... Probably, we're doing poetry this week, and a lot of kids were kind of struggling, and a lot, ha- had a lot of them had trouble figuring out, like, how to do it, but, you know, they followed the directions, and everyone was able to write a poem. Hmm. So, of all of the Heart of the Lion virtues, which is your favorite? Definitely integrity. <laughs> hmm. So, we should always try and be lying strong in everything we do, shouldn't we? Yes. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing Shanti Hershenson for being on my show. It has been thank so you so much for talking with you today. You are proof that you are never too young to start living your passion. I can't wait to read your next book. Thank you so much. And then uh, for all your listeners, if you want to find me, uh, all of my books are on Amazon.com. And you just search up my name, Shanti Hershenson. You can also find the links to all my books. They're all I only have the Amazon links on my website right now at shantihershenson.com, S-H-A-N-T-I-H-E-R-S-H-E-N-S-O-N.com. And then actually some of my books are available at barnesandnoble.com. And check with your local bookstore. They might have them. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Tiberius Show. And please be sure to visit The Tiberius Show on YouTube and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on The Tiberius Show. But there are Tiberius!